Welcome to Factorio. My name is Nilas, and I guess dreams do come true and it's not even Christmas. So this is another reaction reaction video to the latest Friday Factorio facts number 378. And well, I'm not doing all of these because some of them are smaller things, but this one is massive. It's going to change everything we know about trains and trains are just one of the absolute amazing things about Factorio. So let's take a look at what it actually says in the, the the Friday Factorio fact and also what it doesn't say. So the big new announcement in the, this Friday Factorio fact is the invention or introduction of rails, elevated rails, and it looks absolutely amazing. It's something that I've been wanting for a long time. Like, well, I've been saying multi-level uh, trains and belts, but this is uh, definitely an awesome way. So the first thing that they go into is the talk about whether it should be over or under, like whether it should be bridges or tunnels. I think either option are fine. I would, uh, I understand what they're saying. They, they, they say that the underground belts, they work fine, but they kind of just vanish into nothingness and then they come up on the other side. You could do something like that with trains, but it would sort of be a small thing. There would just be like a tunnel and then it comes out the other place. But what if it runs out of fuel in the tunnel? What about signals? What about turns? What about all those things? And you kind of have to invent a new level. And I understand why they don't want to invent a new level so that you, in order to get an overview of your factory, you have to flip between different sort of layers. I would love that personally, but I also understand why they don't want to do it because Factorio is very much about sort of having an overview of all that's going on in your factory. And if you sort of have to flip between different layers, um, that's something they haven't really uh, used much in Factorio. Like you have the overlays on map, but not generally looking at different layers. So. I really like the option that they've chosen to go with the elevated rails with bridges. And I think that one of the concerns is that it causes clutter in the base. You can see on this image here that how cluttered it actually is. But on the other hand, you don't have to make it as cluttered. I'm not or as spaghetti like I'm not, but it will. On the other hand, it'll also be awesome to see your factory and then having trains going over and under each other, as you see on this little uh, animation. So what do we actually know about this? What are the technical parts that we know and don't know about this? Well, the first thing is, um, this is what it looks like. It looks great. It doesn't look realistic because, you know, trains can only go up basically a 10% uh, incline and this is definitely more, but that doesn't matter. It looks good. It gets the purpose across. It is 16 by four. So a pretty damn big uh, area it takes up. I think it makes sense that it sort of has to be wide, one tile wider than the tracks. And then of course it has to be long enough to make sure that the elevation makes sense. We're going to have to uh, figure out where that fits into our designs, but it'll definitely be something that uh, will be a prominent piece of infrastructure in the base. The choice about the red color, I understand it. Uh, the Trains default to red, the stations default to red, now the rail default to red. That begs the question, can I change the colors? Because I can change the colors of locomotives, I can change the colors of, uh, of uh, stations. Can I also change the colors of all my rails or maybe even some of my rails? I don't know if I want to do it, but you know, it, it begs the question and it's interesting because that, this red color is kind of dominant when you, uh, when you have a look at it in the base or in the screenshots here, you can see this. Um, naturally, there are going to be some things when you project like a three dimensional structure onto a two dimensional thing. So you can see here, particularly the ones going up or down, they are look a little bit weird. I guess we'll get used to it, but it's it might be a little bit of, OK, you have to sort of look at the distance between the supports. What are they called? Support. Let's call them support. I know they have a specific word. So let me know in the comment section what those are. Sleepers. Sleepers. Never mind. On the sleep, the difference between this, the the sleepers, the to sort of gauge whether it's going upwards or downwards, uh, the incline. So the three different type of new objects is the ramp, and it is the support, and then it's the actual elevated uh, rails. The elevated rails are just going to be normal rails, I guess, but they will then have uh, railings on the side to distinguish them from uh, the normal rails. I think that's a good idea. Again, color red, interesting. Uh, you can also have signals on top, which of course you have to have, and they're kind of sort of kind of hanging out from the side, which is interesting. And uh, don't know if that actually blocks anything, maybe blocks other things in an elevated layer. Uh, this also means now that there is actually an elevated layer. So, you know, maybe put belts up there or other things or rail or um, roads, for example. I don't know. You, this, the invention of this elevated layer 
means that it can be used for other things as well. Interesting. But uh, what is interesting about this is the supports. The supports make, mm, they're, they're weird to me. The fact that they don't only have the cardinal directions and the diagonal directions, that would seem enough for me. But I guess because trains or the tracks, as we saw in the previous Fight Effect Toy Effect, can also do like partial turns, then those partial turns also need support. I have a feeling that this was made out of necessity because of the distance between the supports. I've heard something about 20 tile difference between uh, uh, 20 tiles as the spacing between two supports. I don't know if we can deduce that from some of the pictures, but if it's about 20, then I guess when you do some curves, then you may be in, be in a position where you need those. Now, this is something you would definitely not uh, see in my base. This is uh, truly awful with the different directions, but I guess that's illustrating that they can be turned in different directions and then they will can, can support uh, the different uh, attachments here. So this is definitely something that's going to be filling up our base design and sort of something we need to figure out how to fit it in. So then the question is, what can you build underneath the rails and it says anything except tall structures and then that also means that tall structures are now something that is being defined a rocket silo is a tall structure robopods are a tall structure and large power poles are mentioned as the tall structures are there other ones maybe but certainly it's going to be something that mods have to figure out if this is a tall structure or a small structure whether that goes underneath uh, or you can build underneath but it also means that the main things Maybe a refinery would be a big structure. I would I would imagine the refinery would be big. But anyway, you could probably build chemical plants. You can definitely build assemblers. Definitely, I assume. Underneath the, the rails. That means you can actually have a factory and then have the rails going straight over. That's interesting. Is it going to be good? I don't know. But I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, what about having city blocks? Because, you know, city blocks, that's a thing. And then instead of having the rails on the side of it maybe have the rails going through the middle of the tire of the city block i don't know i maybe maybe that's a good idea maybe that's an awful idea it's certainly something we're going to be experimenting with a lot about uh, these uh, these combinations and i definitely think that you can build some things underneath the rails and that's going to be interesting to try and, and figure out uh, the biggest sort of advantage that you get immediately is throughput like this example here you have a three-way intersection and then well, it's a T intersection, kind of, but instead of having the one that cuts through most of it and therefore always causes congestion, you can sort of lift it over and go around, which I think is uh, is great. It's an easy way to solve some throughput things, and uh, it doesn't it does take a little bit more space, but space is not really uh, in short supply in Factorio. This is the stuff that gets really interesting for me, and this is the one thing that I was thinking first when I heard this, when I immediately saw elevated rails. The first thing was loading and unloading stations can be much more compact and it also means that i'm just if you start brainstorming what about right now we have left hand drive and right hand drive maybe there's actually instead going to be up and down and then sort of submerges up and down depending on how close you can do that with the updates from update from uh, 377 where you can actually make the s curves really small then you could probably make an a small s curve and then a ramp and a small s curve to merge back into an upper line and um, that could be like for long distances it could also be like empty trains on the top and full trains on the bottom that's uh, definitely an option or whatever you want in terms of your train station train support and it i think it's definitely something that's interesting and illustrated here how much more compact you can do it but also as they mentioned the a reduced number of chain signals which means and train signals are the ones that sort of they are the ones that determine how big your blocks are going to be not city blocks but your rail blocks because you sort of have to make sure that the trains can fit into the blocks and have a parking space outside before they go into a rail signal they cannot they have to be able to get out and this one reduces significantly the amount of uh, rail blocks also something like a four-way intersection i don't do four intersections anymore um, at least not with left turns because they just caught massive congestion and definitely no roundabouts. But, you know, with elevated rails, then maybe sort of the left turns in a right-hand drive train system could very easily be sort of elevated to a, a second level and then sort of uh, curl around and uh, that would cause less congestion for the overall. So definitely all of our rail blueprints have to just be thrown out the window and redone with this. And that will evolve some some new systems that, that's just left or right, left or right hand drive, but it'll also be like upper, lower, 
and also maybe even sort of uh, overflow into an upper for longer distances or anything like that. that there's a ton of interesting possibilities uh, or it could be only merging you stay on the top lane and you only go to the lower lane when you're merging in and out i don't know it's it's a lot of interesting things that we can uh, we can explore and i'm really looking forward to exploring those things now this uh, image here is exciting and a little bit confusing so what we're uh, what we're looking at here is uh, the fact that it looks like you can place the support directly on water and also the ramps directly on water uh, that's really exciting that you can you can do that um just just like that which means if you want to bridge some some kind of water gap then you don't have to landfill it as we do now you can actually just ramp it up build it across and drop down on the other side i think that's pretty cool especially because now you're not making a land bridge for biters they will still be potentially chewing on your rails but they won't be able to cross your land bridge and that could be interesting uh, as well i think this is mainly for like the casual player because i'll probably favor my aesthetic and make sure that i have this common design for a train system everywhere instead of sort of building something and then later on then filling it and then yeah you know but it's a really cool feature i think it gets a little bit cluttered um i'm trying to understand what those shadows are like obviously there's a shadow from the sun cast a shadow um but the other stuff uh, below it i suppose this is it's the reflection of the tower in the water from the viewing perspective. I don't know. Like, of course, when you are looking at an object on the surface, then the it's mirrored into the water. So you see the reflection in the water. But the thing is, if you look at if you look at it here, there's just too much going on and it's too confusing for me that there are two shadows and they're different. This seems like we are back on Tatooine, or except for the water. But well, I, mean, I don't know, this might be something that I would like to see changed uh, because this gets immensely cluttered and I don't understand what I'm looking at. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe some, like the reflection does have color, but this one doesn't have color. It's just a slightly different shade of, uh, a slightly different nuance. It's, it's basically the same uh, shadow, but it's sort of blurred a bit and then mm, less saturated. I don't know. Um, it's something that from an aesthetic perspective, it looks a bit weird to me, but you know, plenty of time to fix that or change it or not. So one of my big questions was, how am I, we actually going to build it? Is it going to be like build and then a shortcut to jump up? Like it is in license sphere where you sort of build and then you jump up and then you jump down. And it turns out that's exactly how it's going to be. But also uh, <laughs> the, the comment here that Corey says, why doesn't the rail pinout just snap to the rail you're pointing at? I don't think Corex is using the rail planner then because um, just snap is exactly what it does, but it snaps to just anything that you didn't want it. And it'll curl around and make little weird curly coils everywhere and just snap onto random places instead of that spot you actually wanted it to snap to. So now you have an extra dimension also in terms of up or down that it needs to snap. I can't imagine that that's going to work very well. It doesn't matter. I think it's mainly for, uh, again, the casual player who will just go uh, exactly like this. Let me just get a ramp up here and then drag the belt, the rails over and then have some random placed locations. It's all good. And then the base will end up looking like this, which is not how my bases look. So I think that from my perspective, what you'll see in my bases will be a lot more deliberate, a lot more careful of making things uh, carefully, slowly, and then copying that into section or a branch or a ray or a station and copying it over to where we need it. We can also see how those S curves here, the new S curve with one tile S curve. So that looks really good. If we look at this, you can see that the distance between the sleepers here and the distance between the sleepers here is different, which means that this is going from downward, uh, facing upward, it goes up and then it goes down. I mean, of course it does, but it, hold on. No, 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 it just goes up. And this is just rest of it is up. That gets really confusing. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to when the ramps are up or down. You can definitely see that they're up because of the rails, uh, railings around the, uh, along the, trains along the tracks which is good uh i guess we'll get used to it like you can see how the sleepers are much closer together here than they are here because this is going upwards and also upwards yeah 
up in the z direction and up in the x in the y direction this one's going up in the z direction but down in the y direction confusing but we'll get we'll get used to it i'm sure it's kind of like the the um, the cliffs they are also kind of confusing you can also see they clip over the cliffs which is nice and you'd expect that they can go over cliffs so that's uh this is not how my base is going to look like uh, but i don't think you would expect that either so in terms of conclusion, well, I think that they uh, they are hitting the nail on the head by saying it's one of the most requested features. It absolutely is. For me, one of the absolute most requested features uh, in the game. I think that they also sort of tied into the Space uh, space Age, I was about to say Space Exploration, but Space Age uh, DLC, where they sort of encourage bigger bases. And therefore, if it's bigger bases, you need to be able to have more train throughput. That makes sense. Also, and I think that's a good point that um, a lot of people will probably have a lot of issues with trains deadlocking because they don't build the signals or the intersections correctly. I mean, it happens even to me, so I know it's uh, probably happened to pretty much everyone that you sometimes have some signaling that's just not correct and then it gets stuck for odd reasons in edge cases. And if you have three different planets in, act, in, in progress, then having your train stuck on one planet that you only check up once every two hours is going to be really miserable because you know, it's not really going to uh, to work then. So having having a train system that is less likely to jam is a very good thing. And having elevated uh, elevated rails is probably going to be a very nice way of handling that. So I think that they're good that they're leaning into this, that they're leaning into the fact that you want to make it more automated, easier. So there's less uh, maintenance and uh, oversight because oversight on five different planets is going to be a little bit uh, cumbersome. The fact that it's expansion only is making sense to me. This is a cool thing uh, that you can play Factorio as usual, but if you want this, you have to pay for the expansion. Perfectly fine with that decision. Uh, in terms of research, I'm also happy that they mentioned the research and they say that it's production science. Makes sense. I think that's a good place to put it. And it also means that it's available on uh, the first planet. And I think that's a very important thing because you kind of want to be able to build your train network early and not sort of go, oh, I have to go out and explore a different planet in order to even get um, some, I'm not going to say basic thing, but let's more advanced things. It also means that we have to sort of cater for when we build a train network, that it has to be buildable without purple science or production science. And then sort of being expanded when you have that available. I don't know, that's gonna be a little bit tricky. That means that's probably gonna be like a starter network and then a, the final network that we really want to build. It might also end up being meaning that trains are gonna be very simple until you get the purple science because you have, or I have designed a train network that is heavily utilizing ramps. That's a little bit unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, then we'll, we'll figure out what flows naturally in a, uh, in a playthrough once we get our hands on it. There's one more comment uh, that's sort of a uh, throwaway comment that I think is really interesting that it says that this is going to be a standalone mod, like a standalone mod that is only ex uh, running, only uh, available with the executable for the DLC. So that means that it sounds like that some of their big things are going to be like standalone mods so that you can basically when you start up a new game you can select and deselect whether you want elevated trains whether you want quality whether you want space age whether you want all the different things they're going to be announcing i don't know how many that's going to be but i think it's interesting that you can sort of disable things if you for some reason you absolutely hate the idea of quality then you can play the expansion and just disable the quality part and then not have to worry about it i like that idea um, I don't think it's going to be relevant for me because we're going to be playing the game with the full expansion available. But, you know, maybe there's going to be another mod that's about, uh, or another one of those standalone mods that's about how biters are going to work, how they're going to be different. And that might be something we might disable if it's annoying. But, you know, it's it's a great that they have, they're making it as sort of modules instead of making an expansion where you go like, you have to enable one thing or enable all of it or none of it, and then they make it as separate mods that interact. Uh, it's going to be, I would imagine it creates more work for them, but um, it gives more flexibility to us. So awesome. I think that's uh, that's it for the walkthrough of this. 
I am extremely excited. This is the kind of thing that will completely change the way we play the game. Like this and quality is something I'm way more excited about because it changes our design perspective, it changes our um, like all of our sort of core concepts of how to play Factorio. They're going to be thrown up into the air and that means we have to start over with new designs, new masterclasses, of course, and exciting new playthroughs. So thank you for watching. If you have anything I missed, then leave it in the comments. If you uh, I want to share what you think about these leave it in the comments below i'd like to hear if you think this is the worst idea or the best idea or some things that i haven't thought about that um, it just makes sense that this can be utilized in uh, in that particular way in a, in a coming in in a playthrough so thank you for watching until next time take care and stay effective